And staying now with schools, teachers and parents, for that matter, are really only one part of this equation. There's another part of school districts that usually doesn't get a lot of attention, but has power over everything, from staffing to curriculum to extracurriculars and a lot more. That's the school board. And this week, we're going to tell you all about it in this story from producer Katherine Rafferty and me. Take a look. The new school year is finally here. And while teachers and students get settled in, the state's school boards are adapting to a new normal. It's the first full school year since before the pandemic, without major COVID rules like masks and remote learning. That's to align the state with guidance from the CDC. Governor Kathy Hochul announced the change in August. But the big news is uh, no more quarantining, no more tests to stay, and the days of sending an entire classroom home because one person was symptomatic or test positive, those days are over. About three quarters of the state school districts plan to use federal COVID relief funding this year to deal with the pandemic's impact on students with a focus on gaps in learning. That's according to an analysis from the New York State School Boards Association and decisions on how to use that funding to address issues caused by the pandemic will be made by local school boards. But what exactly is a school board? And what do they do? It's something that voters choose, but they usually don't get a lot of attention. In a nutshell, local school boards govern their school system. They put together the school's budget, oversee curriculum, manage the superintendent, and more. David Albert is from the New York State School Boards Association. It is the most fundamental, basic form of democracy that we have. And in many cases, school boards, decisions that they make will impact people more than decisions made in Washington or here in Albany because they're so local. And recently, school boards have been in the news a lot across the country. That's been fueled in part by the pandemic and politics. Suddenly, school boards became a space for polarization and disagreement. Parents and community members started flooding public meetings, voicing their thoughts on COVID rules like masks and curriculum related to race and the LGBTQ plus community. But despite that tension, there's a lot to love about school boards, says Sarah Rogerson. She's vice president of a local school board in Schenectady County and also leads the Justice Center at Albany Law School. I love that Board of Education members are elected in a nonpartisan election. I love that because from the jump, you're talking about joining a team. Uh, where the focus is not on political affiliation, but on the district itself. It's all volunteer, it's unpaid, because Board of Ed members aren't supposed to represent any particular contingency, right? It's the whole district, including people who don't have children, but who pay taxes in the district, employees, administration. Our job isn't to pick and choose among the competing priorities there, but to make sure that everybody has a voice so that we can make the most informed decision. And there are now extra layers to all that work coming out of the pandemic. For Rogerson, her school board is focused on the student experience. It's not going to be a typical school year. It's going to be our first closer to typical school year post pandemic, which means a a huge focus on mental health and well-being, climate in the schools, how adults set examples for children coming out of a very difficult global situation. And certainly, of course, the rise in the incidence of mass shootings have resulted in a related issue of security of the school grounds, security of our students, and security of of our employees. At Rogerson School Board in Schenectady County, they elect student representatives to serve on their board. They report on the day-to-day experiences of students in the district and offer their perspective on board policies. Vera Amerbeckian is a senior serving a second year as student rep to the board. And Nina Knezvic is a junior who will begin service this year. They had firsthand experience of the needs of students during the pandemic. So classes were shortened and also obviously a lot of people were online so they didn't get like 
the full spectrum of like learning in a classroom and learning all the topics that we normally would. I think it'll be a couple years before we finally, I guess, balance out and you would have learned everything last year to be able to move on to new information this year. Also, summer slide, it always happens, but in pandemic years, it's been worse. I think board meetings themselves are gonna look different because a lot of the privilege of the floor speakers that we've had during the pandemic was regarding certain vaccination mandates or mask mandates, so I know that maybe those focuses will shift. I'm just excited for school to start back up because as I mentioned, like it was kind of down in the dumps during the COVID, well, more severe COVID times. And so I'm excited just to see a lot of my friends and to socialize again. And I'm really excited to start the new position on the board. Some describe this school year as a sort of new normal. And in some ways, it is. But Tabitha Wilson, a member of the school board in the city of Albany, doesn't see it that way. I love to say that we are not going back to normal <laughs> because normal had its you know, institutional things that did not work for everybody um, as a society at least. So we are moving forward with what feels most normal for people. I think some folks will show up and wear masks at their discretion um, you know, because there are still lingering aspects of the pandemic. And we of course still monitor um, you know, whether there's cases and things of that nature. And we of course still have all the protocols, but very much so open school like a time you or I would remember like back to school there'll be activities there'll be athletics there'll be after school there'll be in-person aspects but we're still being mindful of the legacy impact of COVID and more importantly the things that you can't physically identify where it's like the social emotional aspect that of a, a generation who basically went through three years of this that was pr probably their whole middle school career or the most of their high school career. And on top of all that, school boards are dealing with a statewide teacher shortage. It's a national issue, but staffing is having a huge impact on districts in New York without a clear solution. It was already a problem before COVID, but Albert from the School Boards Association says the pandemic only made it worse. In 2020 and 2021, a lot of teachers retired, um, probably a little more than normal, not off the charts, but higher than normal. At the same time, it's hard to find good qualified people to fill some of these roles. I think the biggest challenge, quite honestly, with schools is gonna be bus drivers in terms of hiring. This is something that actually precedes the pandemic. Part of that ties into funding, which determines a lot of what school boards are able to do in terms of a budget. And while a lot of school funding comes from the local community in the form of taxes, a pretty significant chunk is from the state. That money's decided in the state budget, which is passed in Albany each year in the spring. The state legislature approved a record amount of state aid for schools this year at $31.2 billion. And Albert from the State School Boards Association is hoping for another boost in next year's budget. You've actually seen the, the foundation aid, which is the base kind of formula for schools. It's, it's the primary funding mechanism for public education in New York State. And we have seen in the last two years a full funding of that, uh, of that formula. In many years, it was actually truncated. They didn't let it run as it, as it should have. We have seen that funding formula run the way it is intended to run the last couple of years. So that's great. So that's a huge priority for us. In the meantime, school boards will continue their work at the local level. That involves input from the public, and that doesn't always mean speaking out. Getting involved can look like attending a meeting and just listening or joining a committee too. And if that's not enough, there's always a chance for change. School board elections happen in May when voters decide the school budget. And whether you're running for school board or casting your vote, Albert says you can play a big role in making a difference. But despite all of that, school board members will tell you they're happy to do it. Here's Wilson from Albany County again. There's so many opportunities to be engaged that I feel like I underwent a transformation in a very short period of time about how to be civically engaged. And I wanted that for everybody else too. So I would like to stay involved in every capacity possible, <laughs> as long as possible. I feel like it's a lifelong thing. It's a lifelong learning process, absolutely.